There are three basic levels of surfboard shaping tools, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and we're gonna go through each of those. Some people think you need a bunch of fancy, expensive tools to shape a surfboard. I've got a ton of different tools myself, but really, you can shape a surfboard with the bare basics. When I first started shaping surfboards, made friends with the guys at the local surfboard factory, absolute legends, uh, Bashams in the heart of San Clemente, made friends with them, and I asked them, hey, what do I need to shape a surfboard? So, level one, these are the most essential, just basic beginner tools. When I shaped my very first surfboard, it took me forever. I think my first board took me 36 hours start to finish, including glassing, and this is all I had. First, a two by four and sandpaper. Literally just wrap sandpaper around a two by four and it gives you a nice hard surface to sand against. So when you're sanding the foam of the board, the sandpaper has a hard time cutting down the stringer. Tool number two, the Stanley hand plane. Use this to shave down the stringer. Third basic tool, $10 saw. So you just use this. Once you've traced out your outline on the blank, you need a saw to cut it out. And that's it, $20 of basic tools to make a surfboard. Level two. Level two, intermediate tools. So none of these are essential, but what they do is they just make shaping surfboards way easier. It saves a lot of time, it's just a lot more efficient. Fancy hand planes. This is a hobby planer. This is the Bondi planer, like 20 bucks a piece. So functionally, they are just as good. They're not really any better than your basic $10 hand plane. Oh, they're just a lot more comfortable, a little bit heavier. I feel like pinching this wears out my fingers. So it's nice to have a big, comfortable hand plane. Really recommend them if you like tools. I bought both these just to try them out. I don't really like one more than the other. Honestly, all three of these pretty much get the job done the exact same. Okay, a rasp. I love this. This is probably my favorite mid-level tool. So this is a fine cutting blade. They also come in a coarse blade. These are really nice for, for sanding and finishing the tails of boards and the noses. So I've got a big flat one. We've got two small ones, a round one and an angled. So these are really, really nice for finishing fishtails. And actually, you need at least one of these if you're going to be doing a swallowtail, get deep in that V and sand down the stringer. So maybe this counts as an entry level tool if you're shaping a fish, 10 bucks. Okay, so this is a drywall screen. At some point in time, surfboard shapers started using these. This is essentially an upgraded sandpaper. What's so nice is instead of trapping the dust and debris when you're sanding underneath the sandpaper, since this has holes in it, it just goes straight through so you always have a really, really nice clean cut. This is really helpful for sanding the rails and getting really good curves. And this is super cheap, probably like just a couple of bucks. Preacher comforts, unnecessary, but awesome. The very first one is a flex pad sanding sponge. What this is, it's literally just sort of a dense foam pad. Uh, this is really nice, it has Velcro glued to the top and you can buy these sandpapers with different grits that have a Velcro backing so you can just slap it on, whip it off, pop on a new grit. What's nice about this is when you're sanding the surfboard, you can bend the sponge to fit around the curves of the board. So that's a big benefit over just using a hard piece of wood. This is a Greenlight Surf Supply G-Rasp. It's same thing, just for sanding. What I like about this is it has a really high grit. I mean, this is probably like five grit. Not sure if you can see a bunch of little tiny diamond-like studs. So what's nice about this is it's, it's hard, it's rigid, it's flat. If I'm trying to like make, say, the bottom of the board perfectly flat, I like this. It works really well on EPS boards, but it doesn't work all that great. I don't like it on polyurethane blanks. So this is the Jimmy tool. This is probably my most prized tool. I made this with my grandpa before he passed away, so this is an absolute treasure. So what you do with this is you put this along the underside of the board and it cuts the blank at a certain angle. I believe it's 34 degrees and it helps that you just perfectly tuck the bottom rail. So this is a Sureform blade. I just cut it in half and I have it cutting one direction on this side and I flipped it and have it cutting the opposite direction on this side. So what's nice about this is it cuts going both ways. Next, homemade tool. This is essentially a homemade ghetto rail runner tool. Once you cut out the board, just trying to make sure that your outline is perfectly perpendicular at 90 degrees, I put this along the board and run it back and forth just to make sure I don't have any little high spots. So both these tools actually can be combined into one. After shaping a few boards, I splurged and bought this from Greenlight Surf Supply. This is their rare owner tool. 
And so cool about this is it's two in one. Flip it on its side after you've cut out the outline of the board and you can true your rails. Then after you've shaped the board and you're gonna tuck the bottom rail, pop off the little magnetic handle, pop it right here. And now you have a Jimmy tool, just like this. Super handy. Once again, the grid is so high on this, it does a really good job of cutting EPS boards, but I actually don't prefer this on polyurethane. Okay, intermediate tool. Micro rasps, bigger rasps, hand planes, sanding screen, jimmy tool, rail runner tool, combined rail runner tool, shaping sponge, flex pad, G rasp. None of this is absolutely essential. It just makes shaping boards a lot faster and convenient. That's all of level two. Let's move on to advanced basic tools, to level three. Very first thing, I was initially just measuring the thickness of my boards with a, a normal ruler, just putting up beside the board. And eventually I made my own calipers. So these are super nice. You can reach all the way to the middle of the board and measure its thickness. These are homemade, but my, my scale really is only accurate to quarter inch. So my dad surprised me for my birthday and got me a sweet pair of foam easy calipers and they're good to an eighth of an inch. Not essential, but very fun. Next, Japanese hand plane. It's like a $50 plane, very, very nice, I love it. What's so cool about this is when you get boards with really flipped, aggressive noses, it's hard to fit a big, long, flat hand plane. It just perfectly fits in that tight, flipped nose. Love it. This is the Rasputin. All this is is essentially a really long, big g rasp I would say this is a creature comfort, not necessary, but it's really nice when you're just trying to make sure the entire bottom of the board is flat. This is so wide, you can get the entire board at once. Last but not least, the very best upgrade that you can get for shaping surfboards is a planer. Over the years, I've had three planers. This is the very most basic planer. It's a win, $40 on Amazon, no modifications. You have to turn the handle like three full rotations to go from max to min cutting. And it works, it's fine. After I shaped more boards and saved up more money, I upgraded to the Makita KP810. I modified this one myself. It's got a quick adjust front shoe. It's really powerful. I have a bunch of duct tape up here because for whatever reason, it creates a ton of static electricity and zaps me. I 3D printed this dust hose adapter and what's super nice is this dust hose runs all the way back to a shop back that I have. So when you're planing, it captures pretty much all the dust. Finally, just upgraded to, in my opinion, the ultimate gold standard. I love this planer. This is the Hitachi P20SB. So this is the single greatest time saver out of any tool here. This one will run you a couple hundred bucks, but since the company went out of business, they sold out, became Metabu. Uh, these are really hard to find. So now for a modified one, you're looking at about 500 bucks. I did a ton of catting and I designed a vacuum hose adapter that's super nice. It runs on a bearing that I've got actually built into the system. So it's really smooth. What's nice about this is it adjusts max to min cut in just about a half turn. So it's really easy to adjust the depth of cut while you're planing. And then last but not least, it's got this sick shaper's barrel on bottom. I've got a whole other video that goes in depth on this. There's thousands of little tiny studs, but this will never rip foam. It polishes the foam just perfectly. Oh, and the handle, instead of being on top on these guys, is situated all the way on back. Let's put this all the way back here, so it's just really ergonomic. A modified shaper's planer is just amazing. So some guys will pretty much shape an entire board just with the planer. You don't need these, but they just save you a ton of time. I don't use these planers at all anymore, but I do keep them around. And when my buddies come over in shape, I let them use these. Okay, so these are my level three tools. Rasputin, Japanese hand plane, shapers calipers, shapers planer. So once again, you don't need all these fancy tools, but if you really get into the hobby, it's really fun to upgrade, to slowly save up and get the next nicest tool. And it makes shaping way more enjoyable. Okay, I hope this was informative. If you have any questions, comment below, like and subscribe, and Get out there and make some surfboards. Okay, I'm very excited. Just got a big bulk order of a brand new style of hat. I had, I had the urge to just stab. That would not be good. Unless you want a special edition of stab hat. Oh, this is sick. Check this out. That is super cool.
That is sweet! These hats are going to be going on the website. The website is going to be going live soon. We're working on it. Sell these to help pay off student loans. Does that look sweet?